Hey, Natasha Jordan Ham, Sports 360 AZ. Um, in terms of uh, you know year three, you're building, you're continuing to build the culture yeah. in this era of college <laughs> athletics where you can have over half of, half new players each and every year. Right. How do you adjust your approach to building a, a culture quickly? Well, you, how long do we have? Um, well, first and foremost, I think you just have to adapt, right? We tell our players that every day, you know, get, get used to change. And, and so some coaches love it, some coaches hate it, but we, we do. We have eight new players and seven out of the portal. So it's a brand new team. Um, my staff, I, I would be remiss if I didn't highlight them. As soon as the season ended, we were in the portal. Uh, and we were able to identify specific needs, right? We have size, we have depth, we have height. But I love the fact that we have experienced, experienced players that played in the Big 12. Um, and so I, I just think we have balance, being able to see them now, being able to practice and go five on five on five. For two years, we, we weren't able to do that due to injuries. First year, six players. Second year, seven to eight players. Um, and, and so a lot happened in the offseason. We were able to hire Abby Sherrard, our new strength coach. And um, I'm really big on symbols, and, and it, I wanted to go up a mountain the first two years to signify the start of the season. And I didn't want to leave anyone behind, and so we couldn't do it. Well, this year we went up a mountain. And so as a coach, you look at every opportunity and, and you, you highlight it, you know, growth moments. And so that has been a huge growth moment for us. Obviously, you're building chemistry every day with eight new players, um, but they're more mature. We only have one freshman, so they've played high-level college basketball, and now it's more about just the chemistry and what lineups do we like, and, and we can go big, we can go small, we can press, we can zone, uh, we, can, we can adjust according to how the flow of the game goes. And so I think the portal and, and just this new landscape has been good for us. Uh, but the other side of that is you have to, you have to re-recruit your players every day. Um, but I think we sell being here at ASU, and, and it's more about the family atmosphere. It's, it's you all in the room wanting to talk about our season. It's the support. Um, and so there's so many other things to offer being here in, in Tempe, right? Phoenix right around the corner, WNBA franchise. We know where women's basketball has grown just over the last year from a viewership standpoint. And so this is the best time to be in Tempe and then put on that ASU jersey. Natasha Elioff, Jabai, Sports 360 yes. AZ. Good to meet you. Nice so to meet you. You just mentioned, you know, a bunch of the new players, but a lot of ones that returned as yes. well. How have they been able to show the new ones the Natasha way? If you're well, I think in, in, in the recruiting process, great question. Uh, a lot of players said, you know what, when, when we were in the portal and we were actually starting that process, I want to play with some of the best players, right, in college women's basketball. And, you know, Ty Skinner is healthy and she's back. Losing, you know, first year in the pack, she was leading scorer for, for most of the season. And, and I told her she finished second. She said, well, I was leading most of the season. You got to know Ty. Um, but to have her back and healthy, you know, Jalen Brown, another all-conference scorer, um, they, people want to play with talent. And, and if, you, if you're no stranger to it, I think that was the attraction to say, hey, you know what, we're going to play with high-level guards. We're going to play on the biggest stage. And a lot of the players that we talked to, they saw opportunity and, and a family environment, family atmosphere. And so it was just about getting the, the specific pieces um, to create the masterpiece. Hi, Hello. <laughs> um, when you were in Kansas City, I saw clips of you mm. saying that we haven't seen a real coach aid team yes. yet. Can you elaborate more on what that means and then explain why this year's team is different and a real coach A team and compared to the last two years? Well, uh, I think it's different just because um, the way you'll get to see it, you couldn't see it before because we just didn't have the, the pieces. Um, and a coach A team is going to be relentless. We're going we're gonna to hang our hat on defense. We want to play up-tempo. Uh, we want to score in transition. You know, I, I want to get out of the 60s and be in the 80s and hold my opponent – at least 10 to 12 points under their average. Uh, but to be able to do that, you need bodies. To be able to play at that pace, right, you need to be able to have the, the elite level of talent to, to do so. And so I just don't, I think, I, I thought our fans saw glimpses of it, but we didn't sustain it. And I want that sustainable success. I want to put the foot on, our, on the gas and, and not let up uh, and not let every player have to play 30 plus minutes. 
40 minutes, right? Ty Skinner logged a lot of minutes. Uh, players that are no longer in the program, you know, logged a lot of minutes. And so I think we have balance to where if they're playing 20, 30 minutes a game, maxing out, we're playing all the way in April. And, and so that's the goal. So a Coach A team is fun to watch. It's relentless. You're going to be on the edge of your seat. Um, but we're playing both sides of the ball. We're not just wreaking havoc. We want to execute, and, and, and we, want to, we want to show a beautiful brand of basketball, and, and that's the part I'm excited for our fans to see. Coach Michael Caratino, Pitchfork Lunch. When you when talking about that, to kind of piggyback off that, like the last few years, obviously being tough with injury right. and stuff like that, but get going through the Pac-12 schedule, <laughs> yes, as you yes. know, would be tough. But now headed into the Big 12. I mean, yes, I know it is one game at a time. <laughs> you're looking at first time term, but yeah. just going into the conference, playing in the Big 12. How much does oh, that man. for the players that stuck around? Even obviously the players that transferred in. But right. How much does that experience from you, your coaching wise, yeah. going through the Pac-12? now that you go into the Big 12 help? Well, it helps a ton. I mean, you're still playing on one of the biggest stages, right? Eight teams from the PAC went to the tournament. Eight teams from the Big 12 went to the tournament. Now you add the four corner schools. So in my opinion, the Big 12 just got even better. Uh, and and that, that's what attracts our, you know, our student athletes to want to play here at ASU, to want to play on the biggest stage, because every night you're playing against the top 25 team. Every night, if you have the aspiration to play at the next level, those pros are going to be in the arena. I mean, we had some just in practice the other day. So um, I think it's more about having that competitive advantage. Uh, and, and there's no night off. And, and so I don't think you lose anything in the change, obviously, the, the history that we know. Um, but I think from a recruiting landscape, now I can go to Orlando, Florida, and, and, and recruit that kid that I might not have been able to and tell the parents, I'm going to bring your daughter home. Now I can go to the Midwest and recruit those Midwest kids that might have been hesitant because their parents weren't going to be able to see them and say, hey, I'm going to bring your daughter home. I just think it just helps the recruiting landscape. There are more eyeballs now that are going to be on, on our games night in and night out. Uh, so for us, the Big 12 got better adding the four corner schools. Hi, Coach. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Jenna Ortiz, Arizona Republic. Last year, it seemed like a distant dream just with Ty on the sidelines and Jalen Brown having a breakout season. Yes. What have your first impressions been like of those two working together in practice this year? Well, you see the smile on my face, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, it, you know, it's poetry in motion. Those two uh, have known each other even prior to coming here, being from the, the DMV, Washington, D.C. area. So they knew each other's game. Uh, but I think more importantly, it's about every other piece in addition to them. You know, I, I'm excited for our fans to see our size inside. I just think it's going to be hard to guard, right? Who are you going to sag off of? Who are you going to double? And uh, just, just watching us work on that every day, um, and you can just see it coming together. I, I'm excited about every piece because as much as they are talented, there's so many other players and so many other parts. I think our opponents are just going to, I want to know how they're going to stop them. Hey, Coach. Hey, hey Coach how are Max you? Pitt, Arizona yes, Stanley. Good, good to see, see you again. Yes. Um, you, we mentioned a lot last season kind of in your conversations about how deep the Pac-12 was of women bas women's right. basketball in those final couple years of the conference, really as we know it. Entering this conference, you mentioned last week kind of the identity that needs to be had to compete in this new league. Mm -hmm. What do you see from the Iowa States, the Baylors, the Kansas States, the teams that are already at the top of this league right, right now, and the similarities from what you had in the Pac-12 previously? Well, you see elite level of talent. <laughs> I mean, every team in the Big 12 has one to two to three players that are on the, the WNBA watch list, right? So every night you're playing against pros. Every night you're playing against the best. Uh, and, and so... That's why, that's why I sit here, right? That's why I wanted to be here at ASU. And so for us, from a recruiting landscape and being able to talk about that, we use that in recruiting. People want to play on those stages. People want to play against the best teams. And so I, for me, I, I don't think that there's a difference per se. It'll be a little bit of different style of play. There will be more teams that are pressing. There will be more teams that might play up-tempo versus continuity. But you're going to get a balance of talent. You're going to get diversity and in, 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 um, kind of preparation and in, in how teams play. But you're, you're playing against literally the best, right? I know people may talk about other conferences, but they're not as deep as we are from the top all the way to the bottom. I think the parity is there. 
Uh, and, and so we were able to build a roster around that, preparing to win the Big 12. Coach, uh, LA yes. Sports with 60 AZ. So you mentioned bringing back some homegrown talent, yes. and you kind of kill two birds with one stone with the size and homegrown in Kennedy Basham. Yes. When it comes to what you've seen from her as far as just being at peace at home, what's right. that been like? Well, I think that's the right way to put it, right, to be being at peace. And in the recruiting process with her, I mean, she was very intentional and, and deliberate in her approach. She communicated her needs and a lot of it was just opportunity, right? Being back home was a, was a huge factor, but also being on the biggest stage. I mean, she has aspirations to play after college and she wanted to make sure she could check off every box. Uh, and I think just knowing, you know, she remembered playing, she remembered Ty, she remembered having ice, right? And so she's like, God, to, to play with two dynamic guards. And then you know, it, it, I tell the story all the time about when she went on her different visits and then she finally made the call. We were super excited because she said, you know what? It felt like home and no pun intended. Right. And so if the family atmosphere in the locker room feels that way and then to have her family and friends in the stands, uh, that's just an added bonus. But just to see her growth and development just from day one to now, how we're going to be able to play with her inside and out. Um, two dominant posts versus one, but again, playing all different ways because she is that hybrid of a player in the sense where she can stretch it and shoot it from three at six, seven. And, and so also a rim protector, also someone that blocks shots. So just, just for me as a coach, learning kind of what, what lineups work best, um, what, I liked, what I like in the gym and how, how, how I see her really changing the game for us and even for our opponents. Uh, it's an exciting, exciting, not even a problem to have. It's just exciting to be able to have the opportunity to strategize for that. Jordan Dan. Hey, Coach. Jordan Ham, Sports 360 AZ again. Um, what impact can Graham Rossini have on this women's basketball program now that he's leading the athletic department? Uh, Graham Rossini and impact go together. Uh, I will tell you from day one, he has not only called and, and checked in, he shows up. You know, there's not a moment where he's not over in the office, he's not over in the, in the gym, and he's not checking in, right? He's definitely a part of it. He, you know, him and his wife uh, accompanied us to see Hamilton. Like, he is in the trenches with us, but I think it's more about just his presence and not just with women's basketball. You see him at every, every contest. You see him talking up every sport, uh, talking about all boats rise together and how we build this community, and he's not transactional. Uh, he, he was intentional on, on some staff additions for me. He was intentional on, on making sure we have what we need to be successful and competitive in the Big 12. Um, everything that we talked about thus far, he has found a way. He's communicated through it every step of the way. So I just think his intentionality and his presence um, is, is really a breath of fresh air, and, and I'm just excited to be in the foxhole with him. Hi, Coach. Nice to meet you. Damon you as Allred well. Good to see you. Sports. Yes. Um, you mentioned the, the chemistry building and going up a mountain already. And then the video that was posted. Yes, Camp T. Yes. Just talk about that experience and what came from it. Well, first, when I told them we were going, I mean, you should have saw the face because they're like, where are we staying? Um, but for, for us, it was more about tradition, right? And understanding what Camp T means to the program. Coach Cush, what, it, what, what you know, taking the football team up there. And people said, well, Coach, there's no court up there. Like, what are you guys going to do? So for us, it was a great opportunity to, to have team bonding, retreat. We, re, we read a book every year. So we're reading The Hard Hat by John Gordon. And it talks about, you know, just the 21 ways to be a great teammate. And so we're sitting around the campfire talking about the book, telling stories, what's your hero, hardship, highlight, just continuing eight new players, brand new team. You have to build that trust. You have to build that chemistry and camaraderie. And so perfect time, weather was great. So we went up on a Sunday night, right, made s'mores around the campfire, created team rules, kind of that team pack, uh, impromptu game of kickball on Cushfield, you, you know, but it was just – it wasn't anything uptight. It was just very light, very, very fun for, for the team. And, yes, we roughed it out. We stayed in the dorms. Um, they were ready to get back on the bus and come back. But I think we grew. We just learned more about each other um, that, that we didn't know. 
And so I just thought it was a great opportunity to one, stay with tradition, kind of create our own tradition with, within our program, but um, continue to gr grow together as a team. Uh, Coach, you talked about Kennedy yes. Basham and how excited you were for her, but um, in reference to the other transfers, who are some of the other players who have um, impressed you and kind of shown that they're poised to make an immediate impact from day one? Nevaeh Parkinson um, comes to us from UC Irvine, and when I tell you, I call her my baby Barkley, right? For some of you all, go look. Uh, very good hands and great feet, good mechanics. No stranger to the to the you know big stage. Did really well in the NCAA tournament a year ago. Um, it, she just brings a maturity, a confidence, a presence uh, inside. And so you're looking at, you know, I don't know if, it, if it's a high-low game or, or just being able to, again, you're going to have to double her. And when you do, who are you leaving? So just her experience and, and her, her, I would say her prowess inside, I'm, I'm really excited about. Jazzy on Jackson, you know, comes to us from Texas Tech. Dynamic guard, um, but prides herself on defense. I mean, she is relentless. She's in your face. She's disruptive. Big guard, uh, versatile. She can shoot the three. She can attack off the dribble. So, and, and again, experienced, right? Experienced. And so, um, I would say Nevaeh, Jazion, uh, Heavenly, Heavenly Greer, another Phoenix uh, native, native uh, comes to us from K, K State, right? She was at Oklahoma, K State, now us. Uh, and she's just that junkyard dog. I mean, she is on the glass. She is blue collar. She's going to get on every 50-50 ball. She's just relentless in her effort. Um, but rebounding, <laughs> that, the word that I love, you guys, rebounding, I think will be a big thing for her. Um, who else am I forgetting? Oh, uh, Jaya Levette, San Jose State, and, and dynamic freshman year, all, you know, all conference player. She's a score. I call her my pit bull. I have nicknames for all of them. Um, she's a pit bull, and, and, and um because she is so relentless, she's a scorer, and, and, and just I'm excited to see her grow. Um, Kennedy Fauntleroy. Hmm. Now, that, that, now, that player right there is lightning quick, okay? Um, comes to us from Oklahoma State. Was Big East Rookie of the Year. She was at Georgetown. But a score, a score, a score. Fast, will score in transition, uh, can stretch the defense past three, but also prides herself on defense. And so I just named those players that could all be in anyone's starting lineup. So when I think about the depth, when I think about the experience, when I think about both sides of the ball, not just scoring, take pride in defense, they fit everything that, that we need um, to be super competitive this season. And then kind of on the flip side of that, for some of your returning players, you know, um, Mallory and KD, and then also yeah. Mo and Maggie just coming back from injury. How have you seen them develop and get ready to uh, be improved players this upcoming season? Well, I want to highlight Khadija Torre. I think she made the commitment in the off season. You know, came back in shape, ready to go, um, and and mind, body, spirit. I mean, you can see the le leadership in her. You can see her in practice in the front line, telling the new pl the new players the ropes and how we do things. So I think just as a coach, you see that in players. Okay, are they going to commit to it in the off season? She is that that hard matchup because she can step out. She's worked more on her perimeter game. She was that undersized four, so she could rebound. She could shoot the 15-footer. But we worked on her ball handling. We worked on uh, her stretching to three, so really developing that piece of her game in the off offseason. Um, I didn't touch on Michaela Moore, another transfer, but she is just another player. I'd say blue-collar, very versatile, athletic guard, uh, can defend, can, can score, really stretch from three. Um, but Mallory Miller, another one, body has completely transformed. And I think that was a tribute to our strength coach, Abby Sherrod, and just the commitment in the offseason. Another one got stronger. I thought the physicality of the game as a freshman was a little difficult for her, and now she's pushing back. But she gets to go against Kennedy Basham. She gets to go against Nevaeh Parkinson. We have more competitive um, practices than we've had in, in the last two years because we have depth. We can go five on five on five. And so... Um, Everyone has improved, uh, but I think they've been intentional in what we need them to do and what the team needs them to do for us to be successful. A couple of questions. Jordan, back from the big. Yeah. How is Ty a different player from the last time you guys were able to play a game together? 
I think she's different. She, you, you know, when you have to sit down and, and you're sidelined due to injury and for Ty, she's a student of the game. I mean, all last season, you know, I had to, like, sit her down because she's standing next to me. She's in it. She's talking. She's, she's the voice in the gym. I mean, she loves this game. She loves it at all costs. And she had never been hurt before. She had never been on the sideline before. So I, from a point guard perspective, I think she got to see it differently. She's so ball dominant. She's used to having the ball in her hand. But I think what helped her was now I'm learning my teammates. Right, I'm learning what my teammates need. So now her on the court, she's way more of a facilitator, uh, still a leader, still still a competitor. But she has learned um, each teammate, and then the new players have spent a lot of time with them and and, and learning how to build that trust on the court. Uh, I just think that pause really helped her see the game um, as 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 a leader and not so much as a scorer. But how do I get everyone involved and bring out the best in all people to make the team uh, win and make the team have success? Hey, Coach Sebastian hey. Mandaka, Cronkite you? News. Uh, pleasure to meet you. You too. My simple question is, you know, how excited are you for the squad and just entering this new season of basketball? I'm so pumped. I'm so. What are we? Seven days away. Oh, man, it's just. I remember we were in practice saying 70. Now we're at seven. I'm excited just to see it all come together. You know, I know what it looks like, right? A lot of people here haven't seen it, but I've seen it. This is year 27 for me. So I know what it looks like. I know how it's supposed to work. I know what it takes. Um, so now having the pieces, seeing it in practice, seeing it come together, right? I cannot wait for opening night because now everyone else will get to see it. The one thing that I, I do know, again, it's, it's still a new team, right? So we still have to build that chemistry and culture every day. But when you talk about players that are competing, players that have the chip on their shoulder, players that have something to prove, um, we check off all those boxes. But I'm excited to get started with the season. It's time. Jason, and last question, Max. Any hey, thoughts to Jake Seymour, Son of a Source? I'm um, just curious, you talked about Graham being more present, more yes. involved maybe in the program. Right. Um, what are some of the things that you specifically talk to him about, about mm -hmm. improving the program, um, whether it be NIL collectives or community outreach, mm -hmm. um, to try and you know improve the program to get back? To where you well, want I to think be? you know always being a staple in the community, and for me, you know, coming in, you're you st I still have so many people I want to meet and get in front of, and so I think he's been intentional about hey, come meet with the board, or here's this group, or he, so just highlighting the different groups and and um, specific people that I need to be in front of or inviting people to practice to just sit down and break bread or, or see the team. So just very intentional about making sure I'm in the rooms that I need to be in, that the people who want to support our program get an opportunity to sit down with me and, and the players. Uh, so just very important in that. But I think it's just more about being present. Uh, and you know, NIL is, is a conversation, but I think for us, it, it's twofold, right? We have to get in front of the people. They have to meet the players, but we also have to take care of business. So I think it, you know, but from a travel perspective, making sure we can travel the way the other teams in the Big 12 travel, making sure our players have all the resources that all the other teams in the Big 12 have. have. So from a program standpoint, he has helped check off those boxes. From a community standpoint, he's put me in front of the people that I need to engage with. And so just giving me that support and, and just making sure he just shows up and saying, it's not always transactional about what we need. Sometimes it's just having that presence and support, and he's been there. Just to follow up on that too, talking to people, is that more of a streamlined process compared to what it was in your first two years here? It, it, it has, I, I will tell you that. Um, I just think that there are specific people. You know, there, there are fans and supporters that I'm truly grateful for that have been here since day one, but we wanna grow that fan base. You know, we want our alums to come back. So just tapping into every group and then creating the, the new fans that may not have seen our team or may not have been in, in DFA cheering us on. So just leaving no stone unturned um, because it's, it, I just think that we have such a phenomenal group of young women that I want as many people here in the Valley to meet them, learn their names, learn their stories, and be able to cheer them on on game day. 
And Coach, lastly, talking about yes. this non-conference schedule, obviously some of the more notable dates, you play a ranked Kentucky team in Nashville. Yes. You bring an old conference phone over in state here uh, for the brand in January, but then you get to bring this group to a place in your neck of the woods. You get yeah. to bring them home for you in mm -hmm. Maryland. How meaningful is that for you, firstly, and what excites you most about this non-conference schedule to get this team at least ready? Well, I think you start it, right, with Jacksonville State, and, and then you keep going Arkansas State, and then you have the game and it footprint, a uh, doubleheader with our men, the Jerry Colangelo Classic, to be able to play in that in footprint. Um, I think that's first time ever that, that we're able to do that. So excited about the the rivalry, right, crosstown rivalry there. But then going down to Nashville and, and our Thanksgiving tournament, Kentucky top team, obviously Kenny Brooks, new coach, but a phenomenal coach that I've known for years. Um, so that team will be ready. But, I, you know, for me, I don't, I don't get too high or too low, but the non-conference was set to be competitive, bringing in Minnesota, SMU, um, and, and Oregon State in, in our Breon January Classic. We won't face Minnesota, but it'll be Oregon State and SMU. So you have an ACC team, right, old Pac-12 foe. Uh, so I, I just think that we have to play the best. We have to play those teams to prepare for Big 12 play. And so um, first one is November 4th, and I can't wait. Quick follow-up, how excited are you just to bring the team to your neck of the woods in Maryland in December? Well, first we have four players from the DMV, so I'm excited, and my, my mom has already called. She had to tell you, everybody from church is coming, and we got a list, and every day she's like, G give me the information. I'm like, Mom, I'll get it to you. So uh, she's excited. It, it's been a while. I did talk to my high school coach. She put it in the high school, you, you know, Facebook account. I'm dating myself. Um but it, it will be a homecoming. But more importantly, you know, when we, ha when we recruit student athletes, we tell their families we want to bring them home, especially if they're far away. And so this gives us, us an opportunity to bring our, our players home. For me, yes, that, it's an added bonus, but it's, it's just making sure we get the, the DMV players home and, and Coppin State, that they're going to pack the house. I remember uh, Angel Reese, you know, who played at LSU, they went back and played at Coppin State because she is from that, the Baltimore area. And it was just great for college basketball. I think that the gym was packed. So um, kudos to them for agreeing to do that. And then the tournament in D.C., it's, it's a coaches versus racism classic that we're playing in. And, and it's in the Washington Mystics arena. And so that will be just another opportunity to play in a WNBA franchise for a great cause uh, in front of our family. So. They've already said, Coach, how many tickets? You know, my grandma, my auntie, all these people want to come. So I don't know. Carter standing over here to, to my right. He's going to have to help make all that come to, to fruition. But it's a great opportunity for a great cause. And our student athletes get to go home and play in, in front of their friends and their family. So thank you for that question. Thank you, guys. Go Devils. Seven days. Seven days.